to help you introduce you to the SMART sales system, I want to answer three questions. The first one being, I want to explain basically what SMART stands for in, in terms of our terminology. Uh, I'm, as you can't, if you can't already tell, we use the word system a lot with this. And I'll explain in what exact way this is a system. And I'll just put it out there, what you can expect, what the return on investment will be for you to spend your time with us during this 15-week period or adopting the SMART sales system. So what do, basically does SMART stand for? Well, the S and the M in SMART stands for sales messaging. And this is basically, when I say sales messaging, I refer to what you say and communicate when you're talking with prospects. And that can either be over the phone, in email, voicemail, in meetings, and presentations, and whatnot. So everything you say. And uh, a lot of that could either be what you're talking about regarding your product. Uh, it could be what you say to try to build interest or qualify the prospect and whatnot. Now, I feel fairly confident that we focus more on sales messaging than any other sales training program I've been exposed to or a book that I've read. And I believe that what you say, the words you say, is your most powerful sales tool. There's a lot of different sales tools you can use such as email, phone, uh, computer, social media, email automation tools, LinkedIn, and whatnot. But those are all great tools and will improve your effectiveness and efficiency. But if you aren't saying the right things, then those won't help you much. For example, if you use an email automation tool that helps you to broadcast your message, but your email messages aren't good, then your results, results will be minimal. On the other hand, if you have a very strong message but you don't use great tools, you, you likely can perform very well. And if you combine the two of good message with great tools, then uh, you can perform at an optimum level. So we really focus a lot on that. And uh, like I said, I, I think we do this more than any other sales training program out there. The R in SMART stands for response. And this refers to how you respond to the prospect. So it's one thing to start out of the gate thinking this is what I'm going to say, this is what I'm going to talk about, but you never really know how the prospect is going to respond. So the other half of the sales message is having being prepared for how to respond to your prospects, let's say, uh, objections. So you're sure to face objections. We just talked about the coronavirus. Uh, you're, that's just one objection you can face. Uh, I'm, I'm not available right now. Uh, I'm not interested, just send me your information. So how are you responding to those? Are you just improvising or are you prepared with a response that has a, a, a decent chance of keeping the conversation going? So we focus tremendously on your responses and how you respond. And by the way, it's not just responding to objections, it's also helping you to be more prepared uh, with how you're responding to prospect questions. So there's a lot of frequently asked questions and with those you could also just improvise but there's also logic you can use for responding to questions in the right way and the entire system is really filled with tactics i believe there's a lot of sales training programs out there that talk about things at a high level and they don't really tell you what to do we will tell you exactly what to do and one of the ways we do that is through the system and so getting back to some of those other programs there's often times where i sat through a sales training program and it was very inspiring and motivating. But when it was time to get back to my desk I, and time to pick up the phone, I wasn't in a better place to know what to do in terms of what to say when I called up a cold prospect. And that's because a lot of sales training materials are just fluffy and at a high level. They talk about very rough concepts and don't really talk about when you're in this situation, this is what you need to say and do. And the smart sales system is totally different. We will tell you exactly what to say in this situation. And when you're in this situation, you should do this or don't say this. Um, not to say that you'll agree with everything that we recommend or that everything we recommend is perfect, but you do not need to worry about learning about the smart sales system and then picking up the phone and not knowing what to say or being in a presentation or facing an objection and not knowing what to do. On the other extreme, on, so on one extreme you have very fluffy, uh, high-level training materials that don't tell you what to do. On the other extreme, I've seen some sales training materials that are just too complex. 
they tell you exactly what to do but it's too difficult and complicated to figure out how to adopt or you need to have a certain personality in order, order to do what they're recommending or a certain level of experience. Uh, an example of this is uh, I read a book once that I thought was pretty decent and it had like a nine square matrix that it recommended that you go through when having appointments with clients. I thought the matrix was a pretty good idea. I liked what it would actually help you to extract from your prospects but really figuring out how to introduce the matrix in an appointment and explain what it is and explain what you're going to do and then figuring out what to say to go through the matrix while it wasn't impossible it wasn't something that I thought of so thinking of how to go through it was just foreign and difficult to implement so it was too complicated and while I thought it was a good tactic it was something I never ended up implementing and if you go through sales training programs and you learn stuff that you don't implement not only are you wasting your time but you're wasting any money that you spend on that type of stuff well, the good thing with the smart sales system is that everything we tell you to do or tell you not to do is fairly practical and easy to implement if you choose to do it. It's not real complicated. You can implement the smart sales system with, regardless of your level of ex sales experience, sales skills, um, educational background, or your personality. You don't have to be uh, the, a talkative person or you don't have to be um, extremely charismatic. You just can follow our simple set of instructions. Another way that we can proudly say that this is a system that you can implement is that it offers a, a software platform that you can use in conjunction with implementing the everything you learn from the book and the training. The, that platform you may have heard of is Sales Script or you probably have seen that name or heard us talk about that before. But the software completely aligns with everything we're going to talk about in these training modules and everything we talk about in the book. It's optional. You don't have to purchase it. But it does help it to be what you learn here to be more of a system because what you're learning, the software helps you to implement on a daily basis. And this does a few things. One is it makes it easy for you to implement everything we talk about. For example, we're going to talk about building your message and creating scripts you can certainly do everything we recommend in a Microsoft Word document uh, and create everything we talk about. But if you use the software, everything is all the documents are already created in the software, so you don't have to create all those. So it makes it easy for you to implement the smart sales system. But one thing that it does that is even more powerful is that when you typically go through a sales training workshop, you'll typically get hit with a fire hose and you'll get hit with a fire hose of a lot of information. Typically, when you go through any kind of training, you retain a certain percentage of the information that you were exposed to, and some of it you, you don't retain. And in order to continue to retain the small percentage that you walk away with, you have to reinforce it on a daily basis. You have to use the terminology, you have to use the recommendations, and if you don't reinforce what you learned, you end up forgetting the portion that you actually did walk away remembering from the sales training program. So the good thing about the sales script or software is that it aligns with all of the training. So it is something that if you used it correctly, you would use it on a daily basis when you're prospecting. And the tool, since it uses all the same recommendations and the same tips and the same terminology, it will reinforce everything you're learning making it much easier for you to adopt and implement all the recommendations that you learn. So what can you expect from implementing the smart sales system? So basically our expectation is, is that this system will help you to become a smarter salesperson. And one of the ways that we'll do that is we're going to help you to improve uh, your ability to know what to say in all of the common sales prospecting situations. So you'll go from improvising or being uh, uncertain what to do and say to having confidence and clarity that you should not say this and instead say this. So we'll make that crystal clear. Because you'll be smarter and communicating better, you will make a better impression with the prospects that you end up interacting with. Because you're making a better impression, you should likely improve your ability to establish conversations and also because we'll improve your ability to know what to say when you face objections. That will also help you to establish more conversations. Once you get into conversations and appointments and discussions with prospects, you should have better interactions overall because you're going to be asking better questions, 
you're going to be communicating better, you're going to be making a better impression. Because you're doing all of that, you should end up building more rapport and better relationships with prospects. You should ultimately be able to make smarter decisions. So one of the reasons, a quick example of why that might be the case is because we're going to help you to identify what questions to ask. That's going to help you to extract more information from prospects. Because you have more information, you're going to be able to make better decisions uh, throughout the sales process and managing the sales cycles and sales process. Because of all of that, you should be able to generate more leads. And believe it or not, selling should become easier for you. One quick example why is if you become more prepared for the objections that you're going to continually face and you improve your ability to get around those, that immediately is going to make selling easier. Because instead of getting beat up and shot down, you're going to be establishing conversations. And at the end of the day, we all can feel, sometimes feel a little anxiety when it's time to prospect, especially when it's time to pick up the phone and call cold prospects. Well, if you don't know what to say and do and you don't know how to respond properly to objections, you can easily feel a little bit of anxiety in that situation. But if you change those scenarios to where you have confidence from knowing what to say and what to do, you can decrease the anxiety that you feel when you're selling. Now the system is built on three levels and just to go through those real quick, Level one is basically your sales message. This is not your script. This is not your emails. This is your sales message. So every salesperson has a sales message, whether they realize it or not, whether they create one or not, there's something they're that they are going out there and saying. Could be just them talking about their product. Uh, what we want to do is we want to build you a good sales message that focuses not only on your product, but also on the benefits you deliver, pain points, and whatnot. We'll take you through a process to create your sales message, and that will be the foundation and level one. On top of that, we will end up building your sales scripts. So this is where we come into creating cold call, call scripts and cold emails, and we basically use your sales message to create all of those documents. Once you have all that, you can move up to level three, which is the actual methodology and processes and tips and tactics that you use when you're using your your sales tools. For example, we at level two we create your cold call script. Level three is where we teach you about how to cold call and what you should be doing when you're cold calling. A better example is, is part of level two are objection responses. Well if you have objection responses for this is how to respond but you don't really understand why you're saying that or how to say it or what to do with that objection response, they aren't going to do you much good. So what you need to do after you have your objection responses is then move to level three and learn our approach or a approach for how to handle objections and combine that with your objection responses. So what we'll do is we'll take you through these three levels. You don't have to memorize all of this and, and memorize what is what and what the, each level is. I show you this for two reasons. One is this is how the sales training 15-week program is organized and also how the book is organized. The first section is on your sales message. The second section is on sales tools. The third section is basically on how to sell better, right? Um, by the way, level three is the bulk of the book and the bulk of the sales training program here that you're going to attend. Uh, the other thing is, is that uh, I just want to point out that you can use, you can do all of this without purchasing the sales script or software application. You can create your sales message in a document. You can create the sales tools at level two in a document. Uh, the good thing is that Sales Scripter actually does align with all three of these levels. Very, it aligns very closely with level one, level two, because there's actually an area in Sales Scripter called the Sales Message Builder that takes you through the, the all the steps you need to go through for level one. And then there's an area of Sales Scripter called the Sales Playbook, which is the level two documents already loaded up that get populated with your sales message. So just want to point that out. Another reason why I show this these levels to you is so that you can maybe get a little more uh, clarity around what you need to work on and what you need to do. For example, a lot of clients often come to us to help them create their cold call script. But if they come to us with that, they're coming to us and asking for help with level two. Almost 100% of the time, we take a step back and start at level one to create that foundation. So before we create your script, we want to create your sales message. And then we use your message to create cold call scripts. Another example is sometimes uh, clients come to us and want help with objection handling. 
So they're coming to us to work on level three, but they haven't done the work for level two and level one. In those scenarios, we go back to, and start at level one to create their message, then level two to create their objection responses, and then level three to work on how their their what their work on their approach to response. Now, there are some concepts that impact everything that we recommend you do. And these same concepts come out, come up in each of throughout the different modules that we will take you through each week. So what, what I want to do is I want to kind of some go through the core concepts here right now in a little bit of detail so that we don't have to introduce them each week. And these are the core concepts that impact all the different tips that we're going to recommend throughout this program. The first core concept is to understand the prospect. And I take this, this concept from a book that I read called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by uh, Dr. Stephen Covey. It's a great book. And one of the habits is seek first to understand in order to be understood. And this concept kind of provides some advice for dealing with people in interpersonal situations where there might be a disagreement or some sort of conflict. Um, some examples of where that might apply is a parent talking to a child, a spouse talking to a partner, an employer talking to an employee, or to be honest with you, I think this really comes into play, a salesperson trying to talk to and communicate with a prospect. While that's not just a, a, a clear conflict situation where there's an argument, there is a conflict where a salesperson is trying to start a conversation and communicate with someone who is extremely busy, um, might be a little annoyed, might be giving objections. So I personally think that, and we'll, we, will come, we will talk about understanding the prospect in almost every chapter of the book and every week that we get together here, as we can use this to improve how we communicate. So when we're thinking about what we're gonna say in our message or in our cold, when we're cold calling or when we're leaving voicemails or when we're cold emailing, we can usually improve our ability to optimize our communication in terms of either figuring out what not to say or what to say. And in fact, probably this comes more in handy with figuring out what not to say. The next core concept is that prospects are extremely busy. So if we're taking a step back and we're trying to understand the prospect in terms of who they are, what they're going through, what they're thinking about, what they're wanting, one thing that we can start to understand is that prospects are busy, especially if you're doing B2B sales. So if you're doing B2B sales, you're likely calling at a manager level or above. They have a lot of responsibility. They're, they have meetings on the calendar. They also have a lot of salespeople that are trying to sell to them. So it would be one thing if you were one of two salespeople that are calling up your prospect, but they're getting calls all day long, cold calls and cold emails. So you are part of this larger noise. Doesn't mean that you should just give up and not try, but that does add a layer of complexity and something for you to understand in that when you reach out, you are part of this larger noise. So you, you can make some decisions to determine how you stand out or how you don't look like everybody else. But one thing I definitely want you to do is not look like everybody else. So one of the key concepts that I'll come back to in almost everything I recommend you do is I want you to decrease how much you sound like a salesperson that's trying to sell something. And a lot of the logic here is that if your prospects are getting sold to a lot, they might be guarded because they might be either a little annoyed or they just they can't be open to every communication that comes in from every single salesperson. So that's a challenge. And you can't make that go completely away. But if you understand that dynamic, that you're just one of many, you can decrease that challenge and improve the impression that you make by decreasing how much you sound like a salesperson that's trying to sell something. And I'm not wanting you to mislead and say that you do some different role or be manipulative. It's not about that. It's just about not sounding like you're a product pushing salesperson. And there are small things you can do to do that. And also, by the way, there's nothing wrong with making yourself appear as a business person, even a business person that represents a company or product that you actually sell. That's completely fine. But that is different 
than appearing like you're just like everybody else, all these other salespeople that are out there trying to sell something to the same people you are. In life, everybody has their own interests. Uh, if, we, if we're talking about a salesperson and a prospect, a salesperson has interests such as uh, they want to sell their product, they want to make money, they want to hit their sales targets. Uh, a prospect has interests, and those are actually none of what I just mentioned. The prospect's interests are completely different than the salesperson's interests. The prospect wants to also sell the product or make money for their company, make money for themselves, have job security, decrease stress, decrease work life, improve their ability to provide for their family. Now, that's something to be aware of because when someone is out there sounding like a salesperson that's trying to sell something, they are that salesperson is focusing on their own interests. When a, when a salesperson is out there talking about their product and trying to get a prospect to hear about their company and hear about their product, they're focusing on their own interests. And what I want you to do is to focus on the prospect's interests. And we'll talk about how to do that. Um, but one anecdote to, to show you the importance of that in, in your personal life, let's say that you have a hobby of you like to play tennis and you have a friend that likes to play golf. Well, if you like to play tennis, you likely enjoy watching tennis and talking about tennis and you know all the main professional tennis athletes. You might find it boring when your friend talks about golf because you don't know about that and that's not a shared interest. So this is something that you should become aware of. And if you wanted to proactively foster the relationship you have with your friend that has a different interest, you could resist your natural instinct of wanting to talk about your interests and focus more on theirs. Even if you find golf com to be completely boring, if you just put golf on the TV when you're sitting watching TV with your friend, then you can make them more interested or you can increase their level of engagement. Um, you could do this with a friend uh, at lunch. If you are at lunch with a friend, you know that your friend might be interested in their job, their career, their family, their kids, their their hobbies, their uh, what, what they like to do for fun. So if you ha are having lunch, if you focus more of the conversation on your friend's interests, such as asking about their kids and their, their vacation and their job, they will become more engaged and actually find the conversation to be more fun and even if you end up only talking about them the whole time, they will think that you are a really interesting person to talk to. You can use that, if you agree with that dynamic, you can use that to your advantage when you're meeting with prospects and focus more of the conversation on them, their company, their interests, and less on your product and your company, uh, or at least save that to the end. And we'll tell you about how to do all that in each week uh, that we, we meet, but I'm introducing that concept, all these concepts here, so we don't have to get into that as much detail. You should, hopefully will know what I'm talking about when I bring all those back up. I personally believe that the best salesperson is the one that asks the best questions. Not only is that a great, not only is that the best way to extract valuable information from your prospect, but it's also a great way to get the conversation focused on your prospect. If I go back to that in, same example of having lunch with the friend, the way to get the conversation on talking about them is to ask questions about their family and their kids and their job and, and what they do for fun. It's questions that will put the attention on them. So I, I personally think questions are the key to being a good salesperson. By the way, you may read that and say, oh, that makes sense, I like that, that's, that's good. But you still could be uh, not clear on what questions you need to ask when you're calling or meeting with prospects. Don't worry. We are going to talk about questions a ton and we'll, throughout this training and we will make it crystal clear what questions you need to be asking prospects. I also think it's good to assume that prospects are likely not in buying mode when you send them an email, when you call them. This is not to say that you can't sell to them or that they don't need what you sell. It's just likely, most likely the case that they're not sitting there at their computer Googling uh, the air, to research the area that you sell. I mean, even if it is something they might need, might be thinking about in that general uh, time period, just the odds of catching them at that particular time thinking about what you sell is not likely. And if you agree with that, I think that's important just to factor in 
in terms of what you're communicating, what you're trying to do with the prospect. A an example here is if you go to a trade show where you have vendors and you have people that go to the trade show to buy the vendor's products, there's a totally different dynamic there where you can communicate and skip steps and communicate in a very direct way about what you sell because the prospect is in buying mode. Um, or if a prospect comes into a store ready to purchase, it's a different process. But when you're doing cold prospecting, your prospect is not at that place mentally and that's not what they're thinking about. So it's helpful to be aware of that to modify what you try to do and what you say. One of the ways that that awareness can impact you is that when you're prospecting, don't try to sell the product, sell the meeting. And uh, to give you an example, I get emails a lot from people trying to sell web design services. These web design companies will email us and they'll say, are you looking to redo your website? Do you need to, uh, to, to redo your website or web, website redesign? And when they're asking this, they're basically selling the product. They're asking, they're basically sell, saying, I sell web design, do you need web design? Even knowing if I purchase web design from them, we would likely have to talk and have some sort of sales process. So uh, they're selling the product. But the thing is, is that I'm not in buying mode for web design at the time that they send me the email. And they could greatly improve their results by instead of selling the product, selling the meeting. And to slightly, that slightly alters their message. So instead of saying, do you, do, are you all looking to redo your website? saying, hey, I see you have a website. There's a couple things that caught my attention. I want to share a couple ideas with you. I know you might not be looking to redo your website. Totally fine. I just want to start the conversation. So that could be a phone call. That could be a voicemail. That could be an email. But that message is selling the meeting, not selling the product. So we will talk a lot about that. And that impacts a lot of what you say and how you respond to objections and how you communicate. And it's definitely one of the clips.